It's the bye week, which means it's prospects time. We'll talk about the Sabres prospects coming up next on Locked on Sabres. Your Locked on Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including our YouTube channel. If you ever want to watch the show, head to YouTube. Easiest way to get a hold of us, just type in Locked On Sabres in the search bar and we will come right up sneaky joe dibiase here on the show once again thanks everybody for tuning in at sneaky joe sports to follow me on twitter at lockdown savers to follow the podcast account and joining us on today's show hottie kalakash from the lockdown nhl prospects among every uh, lots of other uh sites as well <laughs> how do you you get around with your prospect analysis yep uh, uh kind of a journeyman uh Dobber prospect <laughs> eyes on the prize is uh, obviously locked on nhl prospects you can find it all on Twitter. That's what's fun. Um, but yeah, I'm doing, yep. doing good. Ready to talk about some uh, Buffalo Sabres prospects. Yeah, and we thank you for coming on the show because, hey, you know what? Past seasons, I feel like listeners and fans would be way more into Sabre prospects because, you know, by this time, let's let's be real. By February, the Sabres are usually like 20 points out of the playoffs. So the only <laughs> hope you have is to focus on, hey, what's this kid in college doing? Yep. Um, but now that there's a real playoff chase at the very least, uh, Sabres fans' mm-hmm. attention is seem- seemingly turned a little bit more um, on the team itself. But, by the way, you can follow Hadi on Twitter uh, at Hadi, the letter K underscore scouting uh, yep. for – all NHL prospect stuff, as well as the upcoming NHL draft, which we'll get into a little of that a little bit later on, especially with Connor Bedard uh, coming up in the 2023 NHL draft. So a lot of prospects to get to the guys in Rochester, the guys in college, the guys overseas or in juniors, as well as the guys that are at the NHL level. So we might as well start there, Hadi. Um, from the two rookies, especially that the Sabres are, uh, having it playing their top six up front in yep. Jack Quinn, JJ Paterka. These are two players that fans are watching night in and night out. And it feels like there are, there are flashes, right? But there isn't yet that consistency. So from your perspective, where do you feel like both of those guys are in their development and what you kind of project for them um, as they're only 50 games really into their NHL career here? He's obviously there's a lot. A lot of progress left in front of him, a lot of development left, a lot of adaptation, still having their growing pains and sort of understanding what the, uh, the dynamics of the NHL are like, the speed of... I think that Jack Wynn has had a smoother transition because his offensive tools are, are so refined in terms of their, their efficacy. I think that he's constantly, you know, driving play in, in a positive manner, weapon, as we all know. Um, um, you know, this is a player who's consistently going to be manipulating defenses. It'll, uh, um, these are all translatable assets, but I think that the main thing for, for Quinn is to develop some physics. To play the board game to take pucks from the boards to the middle. Um, it's all good to cut to the middle. That's one thing he can really learn to, to do is just master that board game and how to get the puck to the inside. I think it's more projectable, but a little less, a little less you know, high in terms of ceiling. Um, mm. Fun prospect ever ever wrote a scouting report on um and what i found in his and you know you had, had a player who could really do a bit of everything had really solid defensions to his game um i think that he's going to adapt a lot quicker than by by next year uh, or the year after you've got a player who's already sort of adapted shell style um he's a bit of a jack of all trades trades offensively i don't think he has one specific tool that's um but but really well-rounded offensive toolkit and a guy who's really going to uh, same thing every night he's going to bring you a lot lot of consistency in that lineup in that middle six i think that's what you can expect the guys they've they've drafted recently i feel like the the sabers are really properly filling out like paterka is either going to really complement that second line really well or is going to be the best player on the third line predict for Paterka down the line. 
Yeah. Yeah, Paterka, I mean, he's you could tell he's fun to watch, but Quinn, it definitely yeah. feels like as a more fully formed game. So I, I would agree with with most of that um, or all of that, honestly, mm-hmm. from what I've seen. But we don't have to spend too much time on him because we've been hyping him up a lot and fans have been hyping him up a lot. But any surprise from you on how dominant Owen Power has looked? He He's a tough one, too. Like we've been talking about him for the Calder and mm-hmm. it. He's getting a little buzz. Like Elliot Friedman the other day said that his vote right now would be for power mm. for the Calder. I don't know how much confidence I have, I guess, in the voters, though, to actually give it to him because his his numbers just aren't there, right? Like if you're not watching their games night in and night out or you're not diving deep into like his analytics, you might just look at it and say, no, 19 points. But I feel like he's playing a lot better than his numbers. I'm not sure if you'd agree with that. 100%. And I think – with power, the issue was never, you were never going to quantify Owen Power by his numbers. It's not something that defines rush defense, his, trans, his, his transition ability, his smooth skating, his ability, his ability to really efficiently and play, play them out. Uh, um, that's yeah. how you define Owen Power. These are things that don't necessarily, what they translate to is offensive zone possession time. They tra- translate to, um, you know, in terms of how how long how often you have the puck versus how often the other team has it, he does little things. Um, I, I feel like from the start with Owen Power, you could tell that, that he was going to become a number three defenseman. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think he's ever going to be that number one. I think that Rasmus Dahlin has that position. Um, mm. But I I love what Owen Power brings to the game. It's very rare that you'll find a player like well who can uh, you know. Bring Break the puck out so efficiently. Um, you always have an advantage growing up. You know, when you're bigger than anyone, everyone else, <laughs> sometimes you pick up the wrong half, relying on your size, relying on your strength um, to overpower uh, younger. When you get to the NHL, that advantage disappears. But that's not, not own power. Own power has a lot, a lot more to his game than his size. So promising, in my opinion. I, I, I wouldn't put him in the Calder race this year, just simply because Calder is all, all about sort of, you know, taking that into consideration. Um, but he's up there for sure. He's definitely in my. Yeah. Uh, Hadi Kalakash here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We'll take, a, we'll take a quick time out. We come back. The guys that are go- that are playing well in Rochester right now and also at the junior level and overseas, there's a lot of Sabre prospects that we haven't been watching super close throughout the year. Um, but are going to be a part of this organization going forward. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you about FanDuel Sportsbook. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And if you're looking for prop bets at the Super Bowl, if you're looking for over-unders on Patrick Mahomes' passing yardage, or if you want to bet on Isaiah Pacheco as an anytime touchdown score, head over to FanDuel and download it so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and easy to use. Best of all, you get paid your winnings Instantly, if you're a streamer like me, a cord cutter, sometimes not even kidding, you will get paid your winnings back before you even see it on TV, which I guess could be annoying, but it just proves how quickly or you're getting your money, your money back. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Jody Biasi. Hadi Kalakash here back on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Hadi of the Locked On NHL Prospects podcast, uh, mm-hmm. as well as Dober Prospects. Uh, we love having the guys on from Dober a lot here on the show. And we talked a little bit about the NHL guys in the first segment. Well, how about some of the guys at the AHL level? And they would have played to the World Juniors as well. So we've seen them at least a little bit here throughout the year. Mm-hmm. I Isaac Rosin of the Sabres from two years ago, the pick they got in the Rasmus just a line and draft. Uh, trade 14th overall in 2022 and then yuri uh 2021 yuri kulik of the K- kulik or kulich we still don't really know hottie what we're doing with that because we're here in both so whatever you want to do there is fine because i don't th- even think i really cool. know yet i'm, I'm <laughs> almost positive it's Kulich, but, but yeah that's um, that's what i thought i think i've, I've heard the american the Amherst coach say kulik but i don't even know if he did it by mistake or whatnot so either way we're, we're wrong with coolidge because i think that's probably right but anyways yeah 
Coolidge and Rosine, uh, what, what you saw from these guys in World Juniors, how their AHL seasons are going, um, is it fair to say Coolidge is, I don't want to say he's he's leapfrogged the guys that went ahead of him in the first round, maybe Matthew Savoy and Noah Oslin, but Hadi, when if I'm seeing any hype about a Sabre prospect this year, I feel like 80% of it is, on Twitter at least, 80% of it is about Coolidge. And rightly so. Um, he was one of my favorites heading into the draft. One thing that I I really rarely hear at the defensive game, I thought that he, he was a top two, top three defensive forward in his draft class. Near the top 15, he was a player that I would have definitely considered higher than 28th overall. Uh, but the, one of the best drafting teams coming out of that, that 2022 NHL draft. I mean, not just Roy and, and Yuri Kulic, but uh, um, well, Matt Savoy, Noah Oslund, and your But on top of that, the guys they added later on in the draft. But I really, really like Yuri Kulich. I, I thought he was players at uh, the World Junior Championships for Czechia. Um, that includes, you know, I'm including, including Stanislav Svozil, who had a great tournament. Um, but for me, Yuri Kulich was so, so clutch up in, in, in the right moments. I literally, um, I believe it was a game against Sweden. Um Mm. I said, you know, they were heading 3-3 into overtime, and I said, I'm calling it right now. Yuri Kulich is scoring in overtime, and he's yeah. that clutch. <laughs> he can predict it. I mean, yeah. he, he, there, there, there's that intangible factor to his season consistently show up in good moments. Um, yeah. Nine goals for 14 assists this season in the overall. Um, again, great defensively, tremendous shot, really good playmaking. He's got so many apps to hit, and he's pretty much guaranteed to make the NHL. Yeah, it almost feels like just listening to the guys in Rochester that cover him day in and day out. And really, you mm-hmm. could just say it because he's in Rochester. He might be the first of those three to arrive. That's not for me to say that he'll be the best of them long term. Yeah. I still I've always liked Savoy's uh, upside and potential mm-hmm. as an offensive threat. But I don't think it's crazy right now to say that Coolidge, just because he's played against men. I mean, is going to be the first one of those three to get here to Buffalo. Um, yeah. they- so and, and then. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just I'll just go as far as to say that you're certain than Savoy, and I say his I'd say his potential is similar. Um, mm. Down okay. on Savoy this draft year, so that that that's playing into it. I think that Savoy is most likely going to be a second game that I think are lacking that are that are really important when he has more than one person on mechanics and and gives away the puck. That's still something I've seen this year from him him in the WHL with Winnipeg. So that I feel like Coolidge and Savoy are pretty much going to be neck and neck in terms of upside and where they end up in the lineup. But Which, because the defensive game is so refined. Yeah, and that's crazy given how I know far apart they went. But it might speak more to how good Kulik has, Coolidge has had as a, uh, as a first-year development uh, track year out of the draft versus um, other guys that went around him, let alone in the top 10. And then what about Isaac Rosine for you? I'm even going back to what he was as a draft prospect and, you know, him at the world juniors, I don't know. What are we thinking? Like mid, if everything goes well with him, he's a middle six winger in the NHL. I think he could, I think that his upside is a bona fide second line winger. Um, I really liked his world junior, especially at the start part of the tournament. He was one of their best players. Um, again, consistently showing up in, in like the way he was cutting to the inside, using his skating over bombing defenders really easily. Um, there's a reason he's ready for it. He's he's a very pro ready player. Um, lots of certainty to his game. Kind of a, a, a connecting dot between a lot of the prospects in the Buffalo Sabres uh, pool. Mm-hmm. Just have you know talents, players who you can see have a lot of projectable elements to their. Uh, uh, Rosan is no exception. And I really like this playmaking, especially in that tournament. Was connecting with teams. There was there was a couple of games where he played with Leo Carlson, and I thought that wasn't where he was at his best. The middle can crash the net, who can um, you know play in tight, who's got good hands, just in the middle of the ice in open space with with space ahead of them to make plays. I thought Rosen really had a great one. It affected the way that I see his upside because I wasn't the highest on him before that, but that World Junior Champion to what Rosen could be, and I think that's you know. Down the line, the highest you can see from him 
as a swinger bona fide, but more mm -hmm. likely than not, he's oscillating between second and third line playing some. Yeah. And and we'll see, you know, he kind of almost felt like he got stalled in his development because we read lots about how his his draft year or the year after he got drafted, he was playing like seven minutes a night in a Swedish team. It almost kind of yeah. harmed him that he was in the SHL. It appeared because he was just stuck on a fourth line. And the Sabres, I think, did a good job of they they wanted to make sure he was not going to be in that situation again this year. And even if the AHL was a big step up for him, um, at least he's been getting the minutes there. So I think that was a good job by yeah. the Sabres to get on that. Yeah, and he's got um, 20, 20 points in 35 games. He's doing, doing pretty well. I mean, mm -hmm. except, but again, he's 19. Like, he, he's got, right. got so much out of him to develop and, and, and improve his game. And I already like a bit of belief. If he can continue to add stuff, then you're set with Rossand. Yeah. What about his Swedish teammate from the World Juniors? And we'll round out the first-round picks. We already talked a little bit about Savoy. Um uh, Os Noah Osland is someone that we don't hear as much about. That might just be because he's playing overseas at the moment. Um, yeah. But uh, is he third right now? Is that is that does that not have to be a criticism? It's just more maybe more about how good Kulich and Savoy have been. But I feel like I know less about Osland than any of the other prospects right now. So what say you on on his development? I'll hit you with a hot take. I think he is the best of the three. Uh, wow. In okay. order, I think it. It's uh, it's gonna be Oslund, Kulich, and then pretty much the opposite that they went in. But yeah, no Oslund. I mean, he, he's playing for a relegated team right now in the division of Swedish hockey, uh, Swedish men's hockey. Uh, um, it's not the highest level of competition, but he's playing on a team that hasn't had the best record, who struggled a lot, a lot last year, and he still have uh, Liam Ergren and. Uh, uh, Yonatan Lekerimaki, who went all in the same draft here as him, up in the middle of the first round in 2022. He's been the best of the three. Um, he's got 20 points. His teammate, uh, his, his, his linemate, Ergren, has 19 points in 30 games, and then Yonatan Lekerimaki games. So he's the best of the three. He's driving play, consistently making plays in tight. I love him. King. He's an incredibly cerebral player. Understands the game really well. Um, certain in terms of making the NHL the quickest, but Usland might just have the mm. highest upside of the three. Um, I really, and you know, in, in a year where you know he he's still with the same linemates, he's still they played together almost the entire tournament in uh, in the World Juniors um, as mm -hmm. a line. They got some, um, but Usland was consistently the best player of the three. Um, Ergen is yeah. No, yeah, sorry, I. I just of I I want to follow up on maybe all three of them actually yeah. with this question because I <laughs> I like listening to you on this because I feel even more optimistic that at least two of the three if not three of the three are gonna kind of hit um kind of gonna hit their potential maybe if it's not even not even a home run they'll be in the they'll be on the Sabers if yeah. that happens if all three go through their development and they're all gonna be you know good players in the NHL. Is this too early to ask this question? They have Tage Thompson at center and they have Dylan Cousins at center locked up yeah. for seven years. I, I don't know. Does do any of those three strike you as more capable than the others of moving from center to the wing? Definitely. Uh, Savoy actually projects better as a winger than a center. Uh, mm. um, I, I like his game a lot more on the wing. He he t tends to stay a bit on the periphery and that's going to benefit a bit, him a, a bit more very you know, he's driving down the, the sides of the ice, you know, in transition, that kind of thing. Um, especially the fact that runners do face a lot of, of like, of defensive pressure from opponents. Um, they have a lot of them and make plays through them. That's their main sort of job. Um, so that will be the playing on the wing, driving down the the, the sides of the ice um, and trying to retrieve pucks at that. Um, so already some of what I consider a winger in terms Terms of his his mm. projection, you recall throw him anywhere in the hell. You can throw him at defense; he'll probably do a good job. He's <laughs> really, like he's he's really, yeah. really worried about Kulich at all. But I think Oslin will thrive as a center because he's so cerebral, pressure at drawing in players and playing through them. Mm. Um, I think that of the three, I'd say Oslin is the other two have more versatility and would probably be better in other positions. 
I like it. And we'll see if all three of these guys even are on the team. I mean, they've got so many prospects and they've been mentioned in Timo Meyer trade rumors and Jacob Chikrin rumors. Um, if they, do, I don't know that they will do that. If they do that, I can't imagine they're hanging on to all three of those guys for what those two players would cost. Yeah, no. Um, and I think it's yeah. a, it's a for them with the amount of depth that they have and the amount of the no. Hell, right. I mean, if you can go get a, a player like that for a a, a good prospect. Yeah. And a, yeah. yeah, right. And I don't I don't like that idea for like Patrick Kane just because he's from Buffalo gets talked about a lot. Yeah. They're not ready to go trade for a 34 year old guy, but Chikrin and Meyer, who I think are 24 and 26, like as long as you're not, you know, you're not grabbing some 30 plus year old guy, I think a, a trade like that would be fine for this team. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah. Kind of take the next step. All right. Uh, we'll take a timeout here. When we come back, round out some of the other prospects we haven't talked about. Devin Levi, we haven't gotten to. Uh, I do want to ask about Connor Bedard and just what level of first overall pick he is, as we haven't done a lot on him this year on our show, at least. Uh, and uh, Eric Portillo, Ryan Johnson. I think they're probably exiting, but we'll just get a, a final look maybe at what the Sabres might be losing in those two, assuming they they leave in free agency. So all that ahead here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, Joe DiBiase and Hadi Kalakash joining me on the show today from Lockdown NHL Prospects. We're brought to you by Built Bar. You got to try Built Bar. My, my goal this new year is to eat healthier and Built Bar is fitting right into my diet. I I don't know that they want me telling you it's a great breakfast uh, supplement, but I do eat them for breakfast. I've never been a, a big breakfast eater. I wake up every morning. I'm eating a built bar. It's, they taste like candy bars. I mean, it's hard not to. They're hundred percent covered in real chocolate. My favorite flavor is the cookie dough. Cause they have the real pieces of cookie dough right in the bar, but also unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond. Uh, they have, Great macros as well. Only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And we've been telling you for years about ordering your built bars at built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's club. It's right. Just head to your nearest Walmart today, head to the pharmacy section, grab a four bar box of cookies and cream. Or if you're close to a Sam's club, run in and grab a 13 bar box of brownie batter. You can thank me later. Check them out at built.com or again, head to Walmart or Sam's club to get your box of built bars. All right, Jody Biasi, Hadi Kalakash from Locked On NHL Prospects, as well as Dober Prospects, wrapping things up here on the show today. A couple of prospects we haven't hit yet. Um, Devin Levi, the, the savior in that, or at least it appeared that way. Uka Pekka Lukanen's had a nice, a nice little run here in the last two months. He's not in the Calder race, but he's at least stabilized their their net enough, and he's still young. But yeah. I don't know, Levi still feels like he's being treated as this guy eventually is going to be their number one goaltender. Goalies are tough though. I'm sure you know that as well as anybody. It sometimes takes them a lot longer than you think. I remember way back when Lena Solmark was a hot goalie prospect out of Sweden and he didn't start for the Sabres until he was 25. And now he's finally having his best season with Boston and he's 28. So yep. it could take a while. So with that in mind, where do you see Devin Levi right now? Is he projecting to you as a number one goalie? And I don't know, for you, how long do you usually project goalies out? Well, one thing I look at mainly for goalies to see if, because production's all over the place with goalies, it can have like really solid numbers, but you look at the underlyings and still look at mm -hmm. when they're accessible versus goals saved above expected. That's not, not accessible everywhere, certainly not in the answer. But the other thing to look at a shot volume so how many sh shots are they facing uh on a regular basis and a lot, a lot of shots and Devin levi is a big reason that they're able to stay in game games um win those out with with some points that they didn't deserve mm -hmm. um so he's stealing a lot of games he's playing extremely well nine and three record when he's in that um near 930 save percentage what i really like all and i know that's kind of contradictory because there's a lot of teams draft goalies for size. Uh, size is something that's considered real scouts sure. when they're looking at goalies. But, you know, when you look at a guy like UC Saros, this guy at all, uh, mm -hmm. but his athleticism, yeah. his reactions, his, his composure are through the in net. That he can just bend around in any direction and make saves. Uh, um, I feel like Devin Levi kind of a bit, um, 
he's a local guy to me. He, he's from Montreal. He went to uh, the most known for producing good Montreal, all you know, players in the Lexan Wee Lions. Um, so, so him since I've known about him since before he was drafted. Um, and that's the main thing that's always come out. He compensates for his size. It's not a factor that limits him. It's something that he's learned to and it's made him just a more solid goaltender. I think if any goalie below 6-2 is good at prospects, it's, I, I, I wage my bets on Devin Levi. Um, yeah. Again, it's, it's actual money on goalies because they're that unpredictable. But um, yeah. I really like Devin Levi. Yeah, you're going to be excited with the UC Saros comparison. Uh, they're right. There's not many guys of that size that can that can become like franchise level number one goaltenders. Saros though has definitely done that. Um, all right, how about Eric Portillo, Michigan goaltender, former Saber third round pick, as well as Ryan Johnson, first round pick that came back in the Ryan O'Reilly trade. It's almost a damn good thing that Tage Thompson turned into what he became because. Yeah. If that trade was still looking like a joke and then the first round pick from the trade walked away without ever playing for the team, that wouldn't look good. Yeah. But Thompson's become so good that fans aren't even worrying about that. Um, the, the players themselves, it, it seems like they're going to leave. It would be almost stunning that they would go through three and a half years uh, of their college careers to get to the four that you need to hit free agency and then stay. Maybe, but... If they do walk out the door like it seems to be as expected, I don't know. What do you think they're really losing in these two prospects? I, I, I'd still, still bet on Johnson signing with the Sabres. Uh, I think that he's going to mm-hmm. sort of trust the team and, and the farm that they have. Um, but in case he does go, I mean, let's start with Eric Portillo. Um, he's um, more or less a starting netminder in Michigan, um, sharing a bit of time. He's kind of a French. Michigan's a really stacked team offensively. But um, defensively, even a lot of their defensemen are real. You know, they got guys like Ethan Edwards, obviously Luke Hughes, um, and mm. that leaves a lot. Of, they have a lot of rush chances against two on ones, three on ones, and Portillo's late. so he tends to struggle with those situations. He's got a 908 save percentage and a 3.08 goals against Africa, Michigan in the NCAA. But honestly, like I, I just isn't much to write home about. The best case scenario for him is you get a backup, like a really, really good backup, but mm-hmm. um, I, I wouldn't rip my hair out over losing Eric Portillo to free agency. I don't think that'll be an issue. Raz, mm-hmm. Ryan Johnson here, I thought he was pretty solid. Um, he played with the University of Minnesota. Obviously, he was a really, really late. Um, he had 13 points in 28 games this year. Just not enough offensive sort of jump. I've always liked this rush defense that he, he manages training transitions uh, defensively. He's really good at pushing players to the outside, but that's not enough in today's NHL. You can't be kind of a one-trick pony. Yeah. Um, so best you could get out, out of a Ryan Johnson is maybe an, a, a, a bad number four or a really good five. Um, but I, yeah. I don't think that's worth kind of writing home about. You can find those on free agency pretty too much about it. Sure. And then how about this NHL draft? So before we get to the Connor Bedard uh, part of this, the Sabres right now, season ended today, they pick 16th. And yeah. I don't know, for what they're doing, it, they could make the playoffs. I, I think it's possible. They're like, what, 35%, uh, at least at Money Puck. Um, Money Puck's been a little off this year with their, with their something's been off with their formula. They have, this, they have the Sabres as a greater chance to win the cup than the Avalanche. That's obviously not true. That, but at either way. Weird. Yeah, that, that, like we all know that's not true. But either way, even if they're like a third of a chance to make it, yeah. they're going to pick somewhere in the in the teens. So if they're in the middle of the yeah. first round, is this deep class? Is Bedard – I mean, I, I'll ask about Bedard in a second. What What's the class in general, and what would the middle of the first round look like? I like the depth in this class. I think the top 10 is unmatched, I, I, it's good, if I'm honest. Um, mm. the, the players that are available – from one to ten, I mean, a lot of them have top, top, you know, first pair defense upside, that kind of thing. Then you go into the teens, it's still really good players who um, kind of high risk, high reward. You've got safer picks down the line, but I think the entire first fell. Um, you know, some guys that I think that the Sabres could target in the middle of the first round, worried about size, I would go for a player like Jaden Perron. Um, he's a, mm-hmm. a, a winger uh, who's SHL. Uh, it's been extremely solid for them. A really good transition player. 
there. He's one of, got one of the best shots. He's a handler. Uh, one guy I would look at. You've got also Oliver Moore from the NTDP, who's kind of been playing, but I think has really similar upside to him. I really like Oliver Moore, and I think he's going to slip. Um, if you're looking for right hand and a defenseman, I mean, David Reinbacher is going to be available in that range. He was he had a sending Pelica as well, had a great World Juniors. Those two, those two are the guys I would consider if I'm the, the same. Um, it's not the draft for, 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 you know, going for a goalie in the first round, though. I don't think you're going to. I'm into the right-handed defenseman idea. The Sabres are barren when it comes to right-shot defensemen, both with the NHL club and in the prospect pool. Uh, and then finally, on Connor Bedard. So stack it up for me. What level of generational are we talking about with this kid? I, is he close to the McDavid level? Is he on the Matthews level? And also, two-part question. So that and where would you want to see him go? Of the teams that are kind of in it, like – what what would your dream scenario be uh, for where Bedard lands? Listen, that that second question's unfair because I'm a Habs fan. So, oh yeah, that's not fair then. Well, how I feel about well, that. you want it you want it with the Florida yeah. pick especially because it'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh my, that would be Sherratt and Connor Bedard. Oh, it'd be it would be one of the worst trades in NHL history <laughs> for Florida. But um, I, I think that the likelihood is he goes to Chicago. I think they tanked too hard for the. Uh, uh, in all seriousness, though, they're 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 one of the teams that have the highest chances. I mean, Columbus, I guess it would kind of be unfair because they have already like a, one of the best pools. Um, mm. You know, adding adding Bedard to that pool would be just ridiculous. But what's your think if you draw a line between Matthews and and McDavid? Bedard's right in the middle. He's got I I think he's got the same goal scoring potential of an Austin Matthews. Matthews. Um, he's really good. He's mm-hmm. extremely good one on one. Um, so dominant and always adds a year. Uh, every time you're like, okay, he's he's capped out in terms of what he can do. He, he finds some, something else. That, here it is, this year it's his board, board play. I feel like it's improved a lot. I feel like next year is going to be his defensive game better in other areas. I mean, he's just constantly finding ways to get better and better. And he just put up as we've ever seen. Um, from uh, uh, a player in, in their draft here playing, uh, what was it, 20, 22 points in eight games? Jeremy Yager had 18 yeah. points in seven games. Like, he he, <laughs> he he dug a trench between him and Adam Fantilli. He said, you're not crossing this. I'm first of all Getting a generational talent in Connor McDavid. And in, in Connor, I mean, I, I mix them up so much. That's going to that's gonna be happening a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Connor Bedard. He had to be a counter. Talent. Not going wrong with him at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully the Sabres are not in that lottery. I know we can only go jump up 10 spots. So uh, <laughs> hopefully they're not in the running for that. But hey, mm-hmm. you never know. The teams could jump up. So uh, something's <laughs> gone terribly wrong, though, if they're in that lottery. But anyways, uh, Hottie, appreciate you coming on, man. Um, just to double or to double up on where to catch your stuff. Um, do you want to plug your stuff for everybody if they're looking for some prospect uh, content? Of course, hundred percent. We're taking a short break right now from the podcast as uh, we're restructuring uh, mm-hmm. on that uh, later on. But all the episodes are out on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, Twitter at hdk underscore scouting. I post everything there. So uh, shoot me a follow. You'll you'll you know I, I work on. Um, I write articles and I'm the QMJHL scout for Dobber Prospect. I'm the main guy on the queue. Um, I'm also at Habs Eyes on the prize writing articles about the hack uh, and a couple other things i'm thinking of opening up a, a sub stack but that's later on All right. right now going on and it's it's honestly so fun uh, i love prospects yeah. i love hockey what it is love it yeah. great well great content uh we'll definitely have to catch up uh, a little bit later on in the season maybe as we get to the off season and approach the draft uh mm-hmm. you never know if sabers acquire some prospect i might just want to text you and ask what they're getting in return so go ahead <laughs> all right man Appreciate you coming on. No problem. See you next time. All right. Hadi Kalakash here on the show. We are going to wrap things up, though, for today. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Sabres and Flames tomorrow. So we'll recap that game the next time we are on here on the show. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And we'll talk to you next time here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast.